اخلاص Um, I had a year where I think a lot of problems happened to me. Um, my parents separated that year. My dog died. That was a particularly tough day. Um, <laughs> subhanallah. Uh, I had two car accidents in the space of one week. Um, and also, sadly, I had a friend pass away that year. I think that year led me to sort of ask some questions along the lines of why am I here? Why? What's the purpose of life? Why do I get up in the morning? Why do I even bother? Why don't I just sit on the couch, watch TV, Jerry Springer, whatever? And I think I started to ask questions about, you know, the purpose of life, and that led me to start to do a bit of a holy quest. Naturally, as an Aussie, the first thing I did was investigate Christianity. Um, I had a few Christian Christian friends, and um, I remember going to a church camp. It was one of the funniest uh, camps I've ever been to in my life. Everybody was singing. I didn't know what the words were. I didn't know what they were saying. It sounded great. They had beautiful voices, but uh, it just seemed really strange. And everybody was telling me how much God loved me, and I was thinking, God loves me? My dog died. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> So I kept on investigating Christianity and I went to a whole lot of, uh, I guess, different aspects of Christianity. So we're talking about Catholicism, uh, we're talking about Anglican, Baptists, you know, priests, pastors. And every time I'd go there and ask questions, I'd find that they wouldn't pick up the Bible and start to say, oh, this is the answer, my dear brother. They would just start answering me. They would just answer from their own opinions. And I started to realize that there was a lot of interpretations of, of Christianity and a lot of people had their own interpretations. And one priest from one church was believing one particular aspect of Christianity whilst another was proclaiming another. So I started to think to myself, the Bible is one text, but there seems to be so many different interpretations and it was confusing. Um, at the time while I was in first year university, I was also working in a service station, one of my part-time jobs. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of my colleagues was a Hindu, was an Indian Hindu. And uh, we'd regularly change shift and uh, at that time I was very inquisitive and I'd say to him, Dude, what's the deal with the elephant head guy? You know, what, what's the deal with that, you know? Why has that guy got an elephant head? And he's going, oh, that's Ganesha, you know, this... I said, we couldn't have chosen, like, a lion's head or some, something a bit better. We'd have, you know, these real, really deep theological debates while people were buying petrol. And I'd be saying, yeah, but why bring five bucks of gas tanks, mate? Yeah, no problems. And, uh, again, I, I found that that was very hard to stomach, so... I sort of investigated a little bit further. I went into, I had a, a good friend of mine who was a Mormon, um, and I found that this religion actually appealed to me the most out of all of the Christian religions, the, the, the Church of Latter-day Saints. They were quite strict. Um, they don't drink uh, alcohol. Um, they, they don't drink caffeine. So unfortunately, Coke's out, guys, because I know Levos love Coke. <laughs> um, but uh, again, you know, there was that leap of faith I felt that I had to make to, to embrace this religion. And I found that, you know, I, I was I wasn't just into making a leap of faith, I wanted proof. I also investigated Judaism, would you believe? Um, and my original name before Abu Bakr is Reuben. So if you've probably seen all the movies, you've seen Reuben Stein. At the end, they probably thought I was Jewish. So they thought, oh, this guy's, you know, one of us. But again, you know, I, I just didn't find what I, what I was looking for. Um, lastly, I probably looked into Buddhism and I found that this was probably the the religion that I was going to choose. I thought, look, this is great. You know, there's, um, there's so much, uh, you know, people, people at peace here. They seem to be really switched on. Um, and they seem to be living one with the world. And that's what really appealed to me. But the more and more I looked into it, I guess I realised that it wasn't a religion of God. It was just a nice way to live. Um, one of my friends, one of my, my close friends, who's a Christian, um, would you believe, said, tell me the religions that you've investigated. So I went through them. I said, you know, Judaism, Christianity, Catholicism, Buddhism, Hinduism, da da da, da. He goes, what about Islam? Islam? I go, they're terrorists. I'm not going to investigate that religion. They're crazy. Why would I even look at that religion? But, lo and behold, I found myself walking into a mosque one day. This was my eternal quest. So I walked straight in, shoes on, straight across the prayer rug. There was a brother praying. I walked straight in front of him. As he went to go into sojourn, I almost stepped on his head. Subhanallah, I didn't have any clue what I was doing. 
I looked over and I saw this brother. You probably know this guy. This is Abu Hamza. He's come here and he's lectured a few times. Um, SubhanAllah, I call him Abu Dan because uh, he's got a very large beard. MashaAllah. He came walking out towards me and I thought, today I'm about to die. <laughs> this is the last day of my life. I'm a dead man. I'm a white boy in Leblad. What am I going to do here? I'm dead. <laughs> He came walking across as though he just walked out of the Sahara Desert. Big Abaya, big beard. But subhanAllah, the first words he said were, G'day mate, how you going? <laughs> if only he had the can of VB, it would have been perfect. <laughs> SubhanAllah, I was very taken aback by his, uh, by his welcoming nature. Um, as Aussies, I guess now, I don't want to offend any Australians here, but my, my upbringing is from a, a country upbringing. Um, my parents raised me as an atheist. They were raised as Christians. They were dragged along to church every Sunday, and they hated every minute of it. So as soon as we were born, they drummed it into our heads that when you die, you're worm food. That's it. There's no afterlife. There's no God. It's all rubbish. So I was raised as, a, as an atheist. So when I walked across and, uh, and, and I, I saw Abu Hamza and he was talking to me um, in a very polite fashion which I was very thankful for because I was sure I'd seen him on the 5 o'clock news hijacking a plane the day before. <laughs> <laughs> now, Aussies are hospitable, don't get me wrong, but Lebos are the most hospitable people I've ever come across. And as the brother Hamza was saying, these brothers were making me cups of tea, you know, and I honestly needed to keep going to the toilet every five minutes. They just kept putting tea in front of me, biscuits. I'd never seen anything like it. And I think to some degree I kept coming back for the biscuits, but also for the religion. <laughs> So when I sat down with these brothers, I actually started asking questions. I asked all the questions that I've asked of, uh, of the, the priests, of the pastors, of, um, of my friends. And subhanAllah, the, the thing that really struck me is that every time I asked the question, they wouldn't just answer. They would pick up a Qur'an and they would say, read this bro, read this. And there was the answer, every single time. And I would ask another question, you know, you know, the hard questions, not the easy questions. Why do women have to wear the scarf? Why, why the, the hijab? How come I can have four wives and she can't have four husbands? You know, I wanted to know all the tough questions, which is the first questions I guess you ask when, uh, when you come across Islam. 